Hey, welcome back to the next lesson on how to network our Among Us project. In this video, we'll show you how to synchronize the player's animations. Now, before we get started, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you can be notified whenever we publish new videos. Now, it's actually super easy to synchronize the animation of our player's avatar. All we have to do is open our avatar prefab. We then want to scroll down in the inspector, and we need to add the Photon Animator View component. So you can click on Add Component, search Photon, and select Photon Animator View. Then under Synchronize Parameters, we need to change the drop-down menu for both our parameters to be discrete. This makes it so that whenever there's a change in the value of our parameters on the local client, that change is then sent to all the other clients. Now that's all we have to do to synchronize our player's idle, walk, and death animations. But if we were to build our project and play through it, you would notice that the direction of our player is still not synchronized across the network. To fix this, we need to make some changes to our player controller script. Inside the script, the first thing that we need to do is turn this class into an observable component. To do this, after where we're inheriting from mono behavior, we want to add a comma and type ipun observable. Doing this will cause an error for this new interface that we're inheriting from, and that's because we need to add a special method to this class, which is the onPhoton serialized view method. To add this method, we can simply click on ipun observable then hold Alt and press Enter, which will bring up a few options, and we simply want to click on the first option, which is Implement Interface. The next thing that we need to do is add one new variable, which will be the variable that we're synchronizing across the network for the direction of the player. This is a float variable, which I've called direction, and I've set it equal to one. Once you have this variable created, we'll then scroll down to the update function. And here in the update function, I've made a couple of changes. This line of code used to be inside this if statement, and this operation where we're getting the sign of our player's input used to be the x component of our new vector2. But instead, we want the local player to set the direction variable to equal mathf.sign on the x component of our player's movement input. We're then going to use this script as an observable component to synchronize the value from the local player to all the other clients. And so we can scroll down to that new special function that was added to the bottom of our script, which is on photon serialized view. Now this function itself should have been created when we implemented the ipun observable interface, but we need to add the code that's inside. The first thing that we need to do inside this function is check to see if the local player is ready to send a value. This is done with if stream dot is writing. If this value is true, then we want to call stream dot send next and pass in our direction variable. From here, we then want to handle the receiving end of this function, and so we'll type else. And inside the else statement, we want to get the next value and cast it as a float into our direction variable. So I have direction equals parentheses float stream dot receive next. Now the easiest way to look at this is whatever you put inside this if statement is what's being sent from the local player and whatever you put inside this else statement is being received on all the other clients. But once you have this function, we'll scroll back up to the update function. And now that we've set, sent, and received the direction variable, we can apply it to our local scale. And we want to do this on all clients. And so we need to add this line of code above our check where is mine equals false. And this line is my avatar dot local scale equals new vector two. And we're passing in direction for the X component and one for the Y. Once you've done this, we can save the script and go back to Unity. Inside Unity, all I have to do is build my project and then test it out. So here you can see that the player's direction is now being synchronized across the network. All right, now that's everything that we're going to cover in this video on how to network the player's animations across the network. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And subscribe to our channel so you can be notified whenever we publish new videos. 